Hey outside world, wanted to do another nerd words video because I haven't talked about anything other than soccer in a bit. And the guy with the bad hair came to mind as something to talk about because season one of FX's Legion finished last night. Now, it's a strange thing to, for me to be doing the video about because if you're into Legion, if you're into the X-Men, you probably watch the show. If you're not into it, you're not going to be looking for a YouTube video about it. So... I'm still going to talk about it, but I fully expect that three views may top out uh, the max on this. So, Legion. Bad hair. Crazy guy. It, in the comics, just so some background, so in case you may or may not be familiar. David Haller, originally the son of Charles Xavier and a woman named Miss Haller. I just drew a blank on her name. She's Israeli. Chuck met her back in the day when him and Magneto were doing their thing. Um, he was raised without knowing. In some versions, Moira McTaggart's the mother. and she, He kind of is merged with Proteus, her son. Um, but he was also raised on Muir Island under Moira's eye. Spent a lot of time in a coma. David's thing is that he has off-the-charts mutant power and many, many off-the-charts mutant powers. His power is pretty much unlimited. So he hit basically, I say basically a lot, clearly, basically, the human body can't handle being as strong as he is, so his mind is fractured. The powers have separated into different personalities. He's also for a long time been chased by a mystic figure called the Shadow King, which is sometimes tied to a mutant named Mamal Farouk, and other times is treated as a mystical being of ancient age that does whatever mystical evil beings do. So anyway, David, on FX, slightly different. He doesn't know about his powers when our show starts. He's in a mental institution. He meets people there. A girl named Sid. Sid Barrett, also the name of original Pink Floyd member who had mental illness. We'll come back to that. David gets broken out. He meets these people who seem to be on his side. The season, the, the whole first season, works for me for the same reason I'm scratching my head a little. Not a lot really happens. Or does it? David getting free and trying to get free of whatever this influence is in his head makes up the whole of the season. The show itself doesn't give a lot of answers. It spends a lot of time with dealing with the perception of reality and what's actual and what's not. Um, toward that end, one of the things very many people mention is the outfits. The clothing style is very 60s. The technology is ad more advanced than modern. Um, it's this weird dichotomy, this mix of eras that makes it hard to tell. Is it just a science fiction version of the past? Is it entirely in his head? And that's where I was going to mention Sid. When the girlfriend he falls for is name for a famously mentally ill person, it makes you wonder, is this also in his head? Now, for instance, X-Men Legacy starts with an intergalactic prison where all these odd alien powered beings are being kept. It's entirely in David's head. All the different prisoners are facets of his personality that he's locked away. So even after season one, I don't know if any of it was real. This could be entirely within David's head. The The whole thing with Lenny and Benny and who's the Shadow King and who is his real friend and did he have a real friend, it's, it's unanswered. Um, which, not since Lost has there been a show that didn't provide answers that was successful. Yeah. That's probably a fair statement. Uh, you know, maybe True Detective or Fargo or something also fits that. I didn't watch a lot of those, so I'm not sure. But anyway, I liked Legion. 
it was a good take on the character. One of the things that the X movies always have that we don't see in the regular Marvel movies, but from X-Men through, they've had kind of an abbreviated version of the X universe. They don't have the mystical element or a lot of the interstellar elements. Phoenix was a facet of Jean's personality. Shadow King was a parasitic mutant from another era. They've constrained or restrained, abbreviated things to make them fit in this universe that's where mutations are the meat of the weirdness and not the Shi'ar and the Shadow King and the Mojoverse and whatever else. So, overall, Dan Stevens was great. He could be male malevolent when needed. He could be lost. He could be sappy. He played a very good guy who's had a messed up life, who's not a fully functioning adult because his brain has not worked properly. At the same time, Rachel Keller did very well with her Sid Barrett on the same thing. She's a woman with... Uh, without many of the experiences a woman of her age may have uh, because she's been in institutions, because she's been unable to touch people, because she can't form the same kind of bonds. And that also goes to the Carrie Loudermilks as well, and or the Carrie's Loudermilk, or I'm not sure what the proper plural is, but, you know, if you told me that Bill Irwin from the Don't Worry, Be Happy video in a 20-something Native American woman were going to be playing versions of the same character, I would be confused, but I would watch it. And I did. So overall, I think Legion Season 1 is worth watching if you haven't. I won't get into a lot of spoilery stuff about it. It can be intense, it can have a couple creepy moments, but overall, it's not wham-bam superhero action. It's very psychological, it's very what is the nature of humanity and power, and those are things I'm a sucker for. So I recommend you check out Legion Season 1 now that it's wrapped. Catch it on demand or legally.